Hi, in this tutorial I'll be sharing some insider tips to help you create cinematic renders. Most of these tips focus on post-processing and effects, so be sure to stick around until the end. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Before we begin, let me introduce our Asset Store website, where you can explore a variety of free and premium assets. We offer high-quality game-ready assets and also Blender projects, all of which you are free to use in any of your projects. So be sure to check out our store at store.blackave.com. I've got a scene here with no effects, and I'll be adding details step by step. Before rendering, I need to select and configure the camera for the scene. I'm using cycles to achieve the highest quality. If you want to use EVNX for realistic renders, check out the tutorial here. Now let's select the camera and press 0 to switch to the camera view. This view looks good. Now let's take a look at the settings. The focal length is set to 70 mm. Choosing the right value is crucial in any situation. For instance, a focal length of 40 mm doesn't work well in this scene and failed to produce a cinematic scene. The next we'll look at is depth of field. You might already be familiar with this feature. It blurs objects at a specific distance. For instance, the rocks positioned close to the camera appear nearly blurred. I can adjust the distance to blur objects that are much farther away. Now the rocks appear much more blurred. Let's select an appropriate value. I covered depth of fill in detail in the tutorial here. The last property related to the camera is motion blur, which can be found in the render settings. It introduces blur when there is any motion. Since my scene doesn't have any motion, I'll need to add this property manually later. So let's keep this option disabled for now. Alright, everything looks good. Before we render, let's switch to solid mode to clear up memory. After that, we can render the scene. Now that we're in the rendering window, let's open a compositor window to apply some effects. Now we have a composite node and a viewer. The composite node displays the final results in the rendering window. The viewer displays the results in the compositor window. Press Shift A to add an alpha over node. The rendered result is transparent, so I can use this node to add a background. Next I need a color ramp. While I can use an image for the background, solid color will work just fine for me. Let's connect the color ramp to the alpha or node, and I'll link the render result to the second input. This isn't the color I'm looking for. I prefer a yellow or orange tone. Okay, this is good. The background layer is complete. Next, I'll add a lens distortion node. This is a great way to enhance realism. Now let's expand the render result. First, I need to enable the fit option to prevent any changes in size. Next, I'll increase the dispersion value and select an appropriate amount. A high value can create a dizzying effect, which works well in certain scenarios. Okay, this is good. As you can see, the effect has been applied to the edges of the image, which looks great. Alright, let's proceed to the next step. Press Shift A to add a glare node. If you are unfamiliar with this node, you can watch the tutorial here. Some bright areas have appeared, but I need to adjust the glare type. Blender 4.2 offers the bloom type. 
If you are using an earlier version, you can select Foclo as an alternative. This glare type adds a more realistic effect to the image. Now let's compare it to the previous result. Now I need to adjust the settings. The fresh held controls the glare range and lower values will increase that range. We can think of the size as the strength of the glare effect. Great, this looks good. Let's take a step further and add lens dirt, which will introduce some spots to the bright areas. I have a dirt texture ready and I'll drag it in. You can easily find similar dirt textures on Google. Alright, let's connect it to the viewer node so we can see the results. I need to combine this texture with the render result. Press Shift A, then search for the mix color node. Set it to multiply, then connect both the texture and the render result to the node. Alright, this is the final result. Just kidding. Using this method, I can add dirt to the glare. Next, I need to combine the original render with the current result. Press Shift D to duplicate the mix node. For this node, I'll need to choose the add operation. Connect the result from the multiply node to the second input and link the original render to the first input. As you can see, there is lens dirt in certain areas, particularly in the bright spots. I have another issue. The size of the lens dirt texture needs to be increased. Press Shift A and search for the scale node. A scale of 1.5 is enough. I've also discussed lens dirt in detail in the tutorial here. Now the texture completely fills the screen. Now let's save the result using the image menu. PNG is good. I also forgot to mention the color balance node, which allows you to adjust the color tone. I'd like a green tone, so let's make some adjustments. Each channel corresponds to a specific color that affects a certain area. Alright, this is exactly what I wanted. The remaining work is more complex, so I'll need to use Photoshop. I've already opened the image in Photoshop. Now let's apply some magic. Now get to the filter menu and choose camera raw filter. Now let's make some adjustments in this window. First, I'll tweak the color a bit. Great, now let's slightly increase the exposure. Next, I need to lower the contrast and then boost the highlights. The shadows setting controls the intensity of the shadows. Whites functions similarly to exposure, but it specifically affects the brighter areas. And blacks is similar to the shadows setting, but it specifically affects the darker areas. The texture setting enhances the details, but I won't be using it for this image. Vibrance enhances the colors, and it's useful in certain situations, but it's not effective for me in this case. The last section is the effects tab. I need to add some film grain, as it helps achieve a more cinematic look. A low value will work well for my needs. The next adjustment is vignetting, which will add a darkening effect to the edges of the image. Okay, everything is good. 
If you're happy with the results, you can click Save Settings to use them for future projects. Select the name and click OK. Now let's compare this image with the previous one. This is wonderful. Next, I need to use a particle texture. You can download it from the store's website. Now let's drag it in and I'll explain how to use it. Press Ctrl T and then flip it horizontally. This technique is highly effective for achieving cinematic results, but it should be used in the right context. Now let's add a mask because I want to remove some particles. First, select the Brush Tool. Next, select a black color. You can press the X key to toggle between colors. Using black will mask the areas you paint over. Make sure that the mask layer is selected. I only need to mask out some particles that are obscuring the dragon. Great, the next technique I want to apply is letter boxing. First, create a new layer, then press the M key to activate the rectangle tool. Alright, I need to change it to rectangle. I want to create a black bar at the top. Once I've selected the area, I'll fill it with black. Now let's choose the bucket tool. Next hold on the ALT key and drag this layer to make a duplicate. As you can see these two bars make a significant difference. The last technique is motion blur, which I mentioned at the start of the video. First duplicate the main image. Go to the Filter menu, then Blur, and choose Motion Blur. After that, I need to set the direction. We can evaluate the results and determine the best direction for the Motion Blur. The next parameter is Distance, which determines the intensity of the blur effect. Now, I need to add a mask. Make sure to hold down the Alt key while adding the mask. This will create a black mask that completely covers the layer. Now I need to use a white brush on the areas I want to blur. For instance, the wings and other body parts that show more motion should be blurred. The tail is crucial because it moves a lot. And in some other areas, I'll use a lower brush intensity. This is the final result. You can work on other techniques, and I'd love to hear about your experiences in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your questions and ideas in the comments.